Here we go. Thanks for joining us today. We've got a special guest, Paula Burleson. And you said that you were from Las Vegas, Paula? I am. I'm from Las Vegas. I've lived in Las Vegas for over 25 years. Wow. That's a, that's a long time. I, I love that a title is Powerful Positive Prospecting. It's almost like a triple P. P. Or actually, it's quadruple P because it's Powerful Positive Prospecting with Paula. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's 4Xing it. I love, I love it. And we, so tell me about have, the TR, we have some copy. Paula. We have some copywriters on that one. <laughs> there you go, dude, for sure. You can Google that. Paula, tell me about the tiara. So this is, I, I am crowned the, the princess of positivity by my coach. And uh, so whenever I'm having a bad day, I put this on so that I remind myself that there's always something good in the universe to, to remember by. So yeah, it's my, uh, it's my little prop to help me remember that, how to be positive. So. Ah, I love that. And you also have this process that, that you do to keep you in that positive state. Right. And I think it's a challenge for for all agents when they're picking up the phone. I think that's probably the biggest challenge is picking up the phone and just calling anybody. And like Curtis was saying earlier, picking up the phone to call your past clients is also prospecting. So don't, don't think that it's not right. Yeah, right. and you know, it's interesting. I just sourced my business and 78% of my business actually comes from my past clients. But I was looking at that and I was thinking to myself, where did these past clients come from? And they were all like previous expireds, previous just listed, just solds, previous for sale by owners, previous door knocks that I've just put into my sphere of influence and then just adopted over the years. Uh, I love that. Mark in the audience, Mark. Hi, it says, Paula, uh, we just last night watched the Big Bang Theory show where Amy Farah Fowler shouts, it's a tiara. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Yeah, that's a good way to start. And for those of you joining us, just let us know what city and state or country you're from, both on the Facebook side of this and in the webinar. We always like to see what part of the country or world you're from, just so I can look and say, ooh, I like that part, or oh, I'm glad I'm not there. But uh, I hope it's I depending hope on how much snow they have. <laughs> yeah. And it's snowing where Curtis is at. So uh, lucky you, Curtis. Lucky you. It's buddy. the sun is out today, but it's already snowed. The mountains are already gaining a base. Again, it's going to be an epic ski year. So we're excited. Dude, you're like reeling me in. I feel it. It's like come. <laughs> yep. All right, so I, I love that. So Paula, can you take us through the process of how you stay positive when you're prospecting, whether it's past clients, expires, for sale by owners, geo farming, anything that you're doing, how do you stay positive? First and foremost, I'm going to give a shout out to Lenny LaRocca, who just came on because he is one of my bestest friends in the whole world. So I love having him out here. Um, so to stay positive is, you know, it really starts the night before and you have to make sure that your day is planned and that your mindset is right. Everything is about mindset and how we think about things, right? So how we consider things. So, um, you know, making sure that I have everything planned out the night before and then getting to the office on time having the accountability there. I also surround myself with a Zoom call and I have other people that are prospecting with me that make it and keep it fun while I'm doing it. So that's um, a, a huge part of it. Um, the other part is the things that you read. The, the, um, I have a list of affirmations that I do before I get on the phone um, that pump me up and get me ready for the day. Um, I don't watch any news before I get on the, I, I get on the phone. I don't do any social media media before I get on the phone just it's all about like what is good in the universe today right so um, that's that's how we get started I mean the whole thing is is like just like at the gym or with like um, the treadmill or working out or anything else as soon as you get started it falls into place but sometimes even for a professional prospector like myself it's hard. I mean, when we started door knocking again in neighborhoods, I was driving around and I'm like, I couldn't pull the car over. Like I felt weird. Right. So, um, and I was like, what am I doing? Like, just get out. Right. So it just, it, it, it does. It's all about starting. I love that. And you said professional prospector. 
I can't not mention now it's five P's. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Professional, powerful, positive prospecting with Paula. Right, absolutely. So, Let's just keep this going. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> One of the things you were mentioning, Paula, is besides those things that you add to make sure that you that you push away that negativity that we all have, because I mean, even me, I'm like, ah, uh, do I really want to call for sale by owners today, right? It feels you icky and weird sometimes, right? Yeah, it does. You're not always in that right mindset to, to do that. And it's like working out. You said, once you get going, then it starts feeling a little better. But there are days that I don't want to work out, right? So of yeah. course, there are going to be days where you don't want to prospect. It makes sense, but you have a little hack, which is you call people that you already connect with at a higher level. So can you tell me about that process? So yeah, so when I start my prospecting, I mean, usually I'll call the expireds first and get beat down a little bit. You know, you get a lot of rejection, you get some negativity, but that's okay. Um, and then, then after that, I usually call my sphere of influence or I have my top 50 that I reach out to. I reach out to five of them a day. Um, and so, or in my a list or whatever it is those are my fan club like those are the people that love me and like you know i've done something amazing to help them with their lives and they they i mean they send me business all the time and they can't wait for me to call them so they're super excited so i'll call four or five of them i'll have a good jive and then i'll get back into those expired calls or i'll get back into the just listed calls and then i'll i'll, I'll switch it up i keep switching it up so it keeps it fresh I love that. And that's a good process. Go ahead, Curtis. I, I was just going to say, and we, we've done a lot of interviews with prospecting agents where a lot of their business comes from prospecting. And, and we found a common theme of all powerful, positive prospectors like Paula. <laughs> um, Professional positive. <laughs> right, that's right. And, and there's always some sort of mindset once it starts to get tough. And, and, and I've talked to agents who say, when I first started, I would call my mom, right? And Tristan, you, you're one of those that said you'd call your mom, right? Oh, I think dude, you I... said that in the last one. You're not the only one. I've had people say, I call my mom, I call my wife or my spouse. I am, I, I, we've learned oh, about, or yeah, your kids or, or somebody who loves you, who's going to only give you positive feedback. And then, and then there was another group of people we found a really common consistency around a prospecting theme song that when things got tough, they would hit play and, and they'd be like, okay, I got this, right? And so, so those two things I think are so important to maintain that positivity again, so that, that you, don't, you don't have to embrace the suck, you can just enjoy your job, you know? Yeah, so and, Curtis, I have an interesting, you should say that I have a, um, an, a playlist, an inspiration playlist on Spotify, it's shareable. I, I built it, it's my own song, songs I like, whatever. But, and it's got everything on there. But the first song that always comes on is the Hall of Fame by Script. And so, and I just, I get so excited whenever I hear that song. So I'm like, cause I'm gonna make it the Hall of Fame. Like it's gonna be awesome. So I love that one. Um, and then when I'm going to a listing presentation, I always listen to Welcome to the Jungle because I'm old school like that. So, <laughs> so, so Paula, we, uh, you were one of the people we interviewed on that. We actually have a blog where we wrote down and we took everyone's Spotify playlist and put it in a list of here's these powerful prospectors oh, and here's so their playlist cool. for Spotify. So I'll find that and post that um, after the show in the comments because that's um, again, that, that's what we found. It's one of those things where, where, you know, we're not building a product around Spotify, but we know no. how essential that mindset is to prospecting and being successful. So, so I'll write that down here. Dude, you should keep, you should keep that Red X Spotify prospecting list going. All the new music, all the amazing music. You should even make one for expires for sale by owners. <laughs> yeah. You guys know that song, Baby, I'm Worth It? Yeah. <laughs> you can put that on the for sale by owner one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a great idea. That's I like so that. Good. Give it to you know, me, I'm worth it. <laughs> do you ever, do you listen, to, Paula, do you listen to music in your, like in a headset or do you have it in the background running? I have it in the background. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm annoying. I have it in the background. So 
but I have my own prospecting space in my office, so it works out really well. So I, I, I have a little, I have a thing that the product team may get mad at me for saying, we have a beta um, where instead of hearing on the dialer, on our dialer, instead of hearing the phone ring or have background music, you can actually play your Spotify playlist. <gasps> oh, that's awesome. So that if people, really cool. if people want to ping me, if they have the dialer already and ping me, we'll add you to the beta list on that. Come on, Get I'm that turned on. on the list. You're, Paula, you're already there. So <laughs> hopefully somebody on my team's listening and they're already going to make that happen. If not, I'll make it happen That's right awesome. afterwards. I love that. Yeah. I, I used to, so when I was prospecting, as I was prospecting more and more uh, with Red X here, I usually have like one, because I, I have two phones, right? I have one phone set to music on my one ear and the other one set to calling, dialing, right? So that I'm always hearing a little bit of light music because it pumps me up, you know? Yeah, it's just yeah. you're in the right mindset. It is. So, so I, I love that. That's my, uh, that's my little hack, right? So uh, let, let's get right into the calling because I know a lot of people are, are waiting to see, well, Paula, what are your scripts? How do you handle certain situations? And I think when we dial like we did last time, Curtis, I thought that was awesome. If you missed part one of this, yeah. that was amazing. Got a lot of great feedback and, and people got to see how two different styles of calling, both successful, right? Both of us using FedEx. I think that was fun. So Paula, we'd like to see your style because everybody's style is a little different and there's no wrong or right. Uh, unless you're yelling at people for the phone, that might be wrong. <laughs> but Paula, I know you don't do that. So uh, no, not at all. You're professional and powerful. So I'd like to see. Uh, and positive. So, Curtis, can you can you set the stage as to who yeah. Paula is going to be calling and what what is this Red X product? As you sure. Yeah. So she Paula is going to call Geo Leads, and there's there's three primary ways people will use our Geo Leads. Uh, product, either just canvassing a whole neighborhood to uh, farm an area and maintain contact with people. They'll use it where you can put an address in and say, and call around a recently listed or recently sold, just listed, just sold type call. Um, a lot of people will use them even if they're running an open house to call all the neighbors to invite them to the open house, right? Because, it. because it's about a neighborhood search. So um, I'm not sure which way Paul is calling, but she'll be calling the geo leads in the product just real simple because you just pull up a map, you draw a line around the homes you want contact information on, and it will deliver that contact information. And with one click, you can load it into the dialer and start and start start calling them. I love that. Perfect. All right, ready to go. I'm ready. Oh, and then um, tell them like because you do have the scripts on here when you're on the dialer, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, on, so so we have scripts and you can upload any scripts you want in there. In fact, Tristan has a great ebook um, that that we've been sharing with people about all of his scripts. Um, and um, so so you can edit the scripts in there. We even have a lot of people because you can have multiple tabs on the scripts. So people will put their objection handlers in there. And especially for new to prospecting, people click over to how do I handle what they're saying and, and pull that up. Dude, so, I love that. It's better than going through like old school and having this like, having to change like, oh, they just, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. I used to try that. I was like, this, yeah. this is cool in theory and it looks cool, but it's terrible in real life. Right. <laughs> so, uh, all right, Paula, let's get to this. All right. Because last time I interrupted right in between the call, so I just want to kind of stay quiet. Okay. And, and Curtis, after she's done a few times, we can go over kind of processes, okay. going back and forth, just talking theoretically since we're going to yep. watch her talk. Okay. And if there's a way to put on speakerphone, Paula, for us to hear the other side of the conversation, if that's possible. We could try it. I know we've talked about that before. Please leave your message for seven zero two three. Zero, zero, six. Love that. So you don't leave messages, Paula? 
I don't, I don't, but what's great about Red X, especially for just listed, just sold, they have, I can pre-record a message and then drop it. Hi. Hi, good. Yeah, so it's easy to drop a, a pre-recorded message. Okay, easy. And you, you pre-record them and send, let uh -huh. it go. Got it. Curtis, the, Nancy wants to know how much Red X is per month if you want to shoot her. Yep. It's worth $1 million. I don't know what it costs, but it's worth $1 million. Paula, Paula paid just the right amount for Red X. Right. Please leave your message for... It's lunchtime here. I'm, I'm hungry. Person you called is a voice. I'm opening up um, my my scripts here, so we can go over part of them. Okay, awesome. Let's see here. And Paula's going to be calling. Your circle. Nine four. Your circle prospecting, right? Yes, we're doing just listed, just sold right now. Hello? Uh, we are not available at the moment. If you and I'm using just the one line dialer from Red X, so it works real well. So I don't have to worry about. Hello, good afternoon. This is Paula from Cobol Banker. I'm actually calling with some great news. I just sold a home in your neighborhood over on Little Rock Way. It was um, that one. Um, I actually live in Oklahoma. Wow, that's interesting. Your number is a 702 number. Have you ever lived in Las Vegas? About 13 years ago. You guys keep calling me and I, I do keep telling you guys that I don't even live in Las Vegas anymore. <laughs> well, I, I, I guess it, pops back up. Yeah, it does. It gets associated with the property. I'm going to make a note right now, but um, thanks for taking my call okay. today. Have a great day. Oh, no problem. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. So you guys, hear this Wait, thing. That, that, that happens, Paula? Uh-huh. You get bad numbers sometimes? Sometimes. Uh -huh. but you Even know, with Red X? Even with Red X. But here's what's so cool is, you guys, and we'll take a minute just to chat about this. When you heard me say, when she says, oh, I'm not that person, I didn't just say, thank you, hang up, right? There's an opportunity in every call. So the thing is for me, I'm like, okay, well, did you live in the property before? And they're like, oh yeah, I lived there 12 years ago. So she sold it 12 years ago. Um, and so sometimes I'll ask if she hadn't been so forward about telling me she lives in Oklahoma, I would say, well, when you sold that property, did you stay here in Las Vegas or did you move somewhere else? Um, and then they'll say, oh, we stayed here in Las Vegas. And I'll say, that's great. Did you guys buy another home? And they'll say, yes, we did. And I'll say, well, you know, it's interesting. The reason why I was calling these guys was because it's a great time to be a seller. Have you considered selling your home? I mean, you've got a person on the phone. You've got a contact. So you have to make, it's your responsibility to make the most out of it while you have them on the phone. That's so true. And I, I love how you, you just made it easy. I think one thing that you'll notice that you may not have been paying attention to is the fact that professional prospectors, if you want to call them that, um, <laughs> it, professional positive prospectors. And powerful. Pow powerful. Okay, you know what? Okay, come on, you got to get I this right. a whole bunch. <laughs> uh, is that she's paying attention to their tonality too. Hello, good morning or good afternoon. Hello. Hi, I'm, this is Paula from Coldwell Banker and I'm calling with some great news. I just sold a home in your neighborhood over on Little Rock Way. It was the smaller home when we sold it for 290,000 in just three days. And the reason for my call is because we know that when one person sells a home, usually two more sell right away. So I was calling to find out when you planned on moving. Well, I don't own a home, so I mean, I guess I don't think it really matters because I can't sell the house and you don't belong to someone else. Well, you know what? You're absolutely right. Do you live here in Las Vegas? In Las Vegas? Yeah. 
Vegas? Yes. No. Okay. No, they don't know why somebody with a Montana number would live in Las Vegas unless they moved from Montana to begin with. Right. We have a lot of people that live here from Montana, but I appreciate your time today. Thanks and make it a great day. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. So here's the thing. You never get offended. That's the thing. Like people want to be right and they want to like be sassy and all those things. Like, you know, I could have like been sassy with her and said, well, people have numbers all the time here, but, but that doesn't benefit us in any way. You know, we just have to keep moving on, right? Just move to the next number and get the next contact. That's, and that's what I was talking about with the tonality. You're listening to the tonality to see how they're responding and whether or not you can move forward a little bit more or just, or just let it be. Right. And the other thing is pacing. Like you got to pace like so many people, especially when they first start prospecting, they don't, they get the script and then they don't take the time to practice and memorize it and like practice it like they were on stage. Right. So the pacing and the timing is super important to how it's perceived from the other side. Um, the stops, and the, I, the, you know, after I say, you know, when one home sells, usually two more sell right away. I smile really big. I give out a little giggle and people, and then I, and I slow it down so that they actually will listen. It's, it's this weird thing that they've actually proven that if you slow the pace of your conversation, that forces the other person to listen. Uh, Paul, Paula, I have, I have a question for you since okay. since you're de you're calling Red X leads and we're two for two connections with the wrong number. <laughs> um, what time do you normally prospect during the day, and do you see a difference in connections based on the time that you're calling? Absolutely. So my that's why when I call my expires, I call them from like eight to eight thirty, and I get the new expires out right away. Um, and then I'll call the rest of my geo leads and all those kinds of and for sale by owners and so forth and so on. Um, by this time of the day, a lot of people, I mean, just listed, just sold, you can call pretty much any time. But um, I try to call um, my um, for sale by owners and then do my lead follow up and even geo leads after three o'clock in the afternoon. So like three to five is also a great window. I tell people all the time, especially if they're going to be making calls um, after that three o'clock. I mean, who's at home with, you know, who's at home at three o'clock? What happens at three o'clock and across the world when we're not, when we're not homeschooling, right? Yeah, picking up kids. Picking up kids, right? And who picks up kids? Uh, mom. mom. Mom picks up kids most of the time. Not always, Tristan. Tristan, you probably pick up some you, kids. You confused me, so I was like... Uh, should I say the mom or am I going to be not right? That's what happened. <laughs> no, you with me, you're 100% right all the time. So, and then who makes the decisions in the family? Mom. The wife. Mom, sure. wife, right? Yeah. Mom. So you get an opportunity to talk to the decision maker after three o'clock in the afternoon. So I love calling and doing my door knocking between three and five o'clock. So that's, that's awesome. I love that. That's a, that's a really good point that you bring up. And Curtis, I'm glad you asked that because a lot of people say, well, when should I call? Right? Right. And well, I mean, honestly, as long as you're calling, that's when you should call. Like, you know, I mean, but, you know, I would say between like eight and 10, eight and 11. Um, and then, you know, between three and five are the best times to times to call on Saturdays. I call from from nine to noon on Saturdays, you know, before they get out, get out of the house. You know, that's, that's a good point. And I think the, the fact that you're calling is, is something that keeps you going. And I'm going to go back to the workout, Paula, because you mentioned it's just like working out. Once you start working out. I'm and, sorry, the person you were trying to reach has a voice. And you stop. You kind of feel like you're missing something. And yeah. it's the same thing with calling. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then what's also interesting is it's all, it's a big part of it is consistency, you know, can, hey, I can't get my phone right now, so um, continuing to call, 
Consistency is super important with prospecting. I mean, even myself, if I take some time off or I take a week off or a month off or I haven't called a source for a long time, when I get back on the phone, I'm, I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm like, my first three calls are like practice calls. I'm like, like, I'll be like, hi, this is Paula. How are you? And I'm like, who am I right now? Like, I don't even know. So I, yeah, so it's, it's all about consistency. So even if you can just make, I tell all my clients, all my, all my, all my agents, I was like, just make 10 contacts a day. If you can commit to making 10 contacts a day, every single day, your skills will be better. Your mindset will be better and it'll change your business, you know? <laughs> that's so true and, and anybody can make 10 contacts a day i mean you know paula can we talk while, while you're waiting for that uh -huh. about the script because you're using a script that that i i know i know the script you're using yeah but talk about that because a lot of people think they have to they have to find like the perfect script to call <laughs> So, um, what's interesting about the script, and I don't know how much you want, I, I, it's a Mike Ferry script, of course, and then, so, the other thing is, is that it, it, you know, says what they, you, you, what you've done, so I always call and say, hey, I'm calling with great news about the neighborhood, um, we recently just sold a home over on Little Rock Way, it was on the market for three days, and we sold it for over list, just curious, you know, um, if you're doing just listed, you'll say who you might know that wants to move in the neighborhood with this one. We say, you know, when one home sells, usually two more sell right away. We know that they're going to lie to us. It's an automatic no. It's not personal. It's just human nature. So those first couple of questions, once you get into your mind that you know they're going to say what they're going to say, they're going to say no. They're going to say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't. I'm not interested. Once you know that's what their script is, you can just move past it, you know? And so it's really, really important to know that those questions are in those order to to get through that automatic no and to be able to keep moving forward. Oh, like it. It's just part of the process. You know, yeah. it's like, it's like I, I keep on going back to working out, but it's like working out because you're going to get automatic voice messages. You're going to get, you're going to get pain. There's pain involved in working out. Yeah. It's part of the growing process. And I've been calling for a very long time. So, there are some bad days. There are some days. Hello, that... good, good afternoon. Hello? Oh, they hung up. They just picked it up and hung up. Oh, got it. Yeah, there are some bad days. There are some Oh, days. and that's the other thing that we're we talking about mindset, right? So with just listed, just sold, um, people get offended that they get hung up on or that people say they're not interested. But I believe that it's our responsibility to change our mindset. For me, when they hang up, I'm like, yay, they're not interested. I don't have to waste any more of my time. I can move on. Like they've, they've acknowledged that they're not moving. I mean, you can't be mad at someone for calling them and them not wanting to move. I mean, that's, that's, and the fact that they just hang up just, doesn't waste your time. I mean, you get to find that way I can get to the person that does need my help faster. I love, so, I love that. It's just a mindset. And I just go, thank you for hanging up. <laughs> Wendy Williams says, Paula, you are an amazing multitasker. Oh, that's fine. That, thank you for that. One, three, three, nine. Can I, can I jump in and tell everybody who's watching what's going on in the background? Cause they can't see your see your screen there while it's going. The great thing about using a dialer is it keeps you on point and, and it's calling through. And if it's a disconnected or if it's a wrong number or, or Paula, wherever she has it set to ring, however many times it's going to ring um, is, is it's really easy just to move through those things um, as they're going through so that, it can help her to multitask, but that's why these long pauses are going through. And then when it connects, um, my guess is that at 1.30 in the afternoon, there's automatic voice message. just not a lot of people home it makes you sense. Know, in the neighborhood. And, and you might call a different neighborhood and a ton of people be home. That matters. That, that has to do with the demographics of the neighborhood and everything else. But um, 
But and you're we, right, Curtis. I mean, look, how long have we been on the phone? We've been on the phone. I mean, we've been doing this for, well, I'll tell you. I can tell you exactly. So um, for 15 minutes and 47 seconds, I've been dialing. And I've made um, 30 calls, 29 calls. So, I mean, it's unbeatable to as far as efficiency goes, you know. I think uh, I wanted to share my screen uh, just to show. Okay. Your wireless carrier. So this is what what her screen looks like when she goes over to GeoLeads. And then once she clicks on it, they populate. And at this point, you have all of you have everybody's information right here. I mean, I can go in and and take it. All right, it went to the voice mail box of nine. Well, I wanted to show something on this while, um, hold on. Here, uh, there's, we get this question asked a lot, Curtis. That's why I'm bringing it up. There's a DNC. Yep. Right? So this is do not call. So if you, you can skip those, right? And just go directly to those. Forwarded to an automated voice message. Perfect. And then if I click that, it would start the well, whole back. Well, I'm looking at your account. It's grayed out because for some reason it's not on your account. So I, I can fix that. Perfect. Perfect. So Paula, while you're dialing, we'll probably wrap up the dialer in about two to three minutes so we can go. I'm listening. Oh, perfect. I thought somebody was saying hi. So we can go through the scripting back and forth with each other. Okay. And, um, and and then we can kind of show the different paths that that could take, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. And then so let me just um, okay. So it's I'm finished with that phone call. So let's do that. Perfect. Wendy has a question for you. Are these calls all based on recent sales of yours, Paula, or are you just calling a, a neighborhood in general? So, Wendy, it's a great question. This specific calls are calls that I'm making um, from a listing that I just sold and closed um, last week. But that being said, um, depending on um, what script you use and or you can always, I mean, I would check with your broker, but my broker is like, call the neighborhoods, what, whatever. So you can call on anybody's listings. You can call on um, other companies' listings um, and just say, just you have to switch the script up. You have to say, you know, a, a home just sold in your neighborhood. Um, you can't take personal responsibility for it, but, you know, I'm calling to let you know that a home just sold in your neighborhood and it was a three bedroom, two bath and it sold for 300 35,000 just wondering you know and just move through it just like you normally would the other um, great script to have is um, a hot buyer script so you can say hey you know I have a buyer that's looking specifically to buy in this area um, who do you do and so we were just calling to find out when you planned on moving or if you were interested in receiving you know and putting your home on the market so there's a lot of different ways to be able to approach that oh, I love that so let's see any other questions on this side good there's a question on from facebook okay from rhonda map when calling during her usual prospecting times that's yours how many dials an hour do you usually get to uh or how many leads do you talk to in an hour approximately okay so this 10 so i usually my average is 9 to 10 um depending on the lead source that we're calling um using the dialer um i don't know what it would be otherwise but that's that's what i usually um 9 to 10 an hour um, now, I will say this, I do not keep up with, nor do I suggest keeping up with um, the number of dials that you actually make because it's demoralizing. I mean, it just, it's, it's a lot. And it's not a number that really has any effect on, on your success. So just keep your, con you know, call on your contacts and call it a day. I, and, and when I can tell you that, that it's taking more dials because less people, it, what's funny is in the beginning of COVID, connection rates actually went up. Oh, man, I, I was on the phone like 14 hours a day because everybody I, didn't talk to me. 
and and now because there's there's a lot people are home and they're sick of it now connection rates are actually down but again to to paula's point it's about that's one way a dialer can help the efficiency but two it's about how many people you talk to um and but but to, to get 10 conversations it takes about an hour right now is what you're saying paul yeah absolutely yep. absolutely so my average conversation is you know 40 to 50 seconds if it's somebody that's interested we can go for about six takes me about six minutes to make the appointment yeah, it's interesting that you talk to about 10 people. And this is on circle circle dialing or geo? Dialing. Yeah, I mean, actually, the number's a little bit higher with that. So um, in an hour, um, but when I'm calling my expireds um, or for sale by owners, it's about 10. Um, and then if it's, you know, my sphere of influence, I tend to talk longer with them. Um, right. So yeah. it, takes yep. more, it takes more per hour. That, that that's an that's evidence enough that most for sale by owners need a professional real estate agent the fact that we have to call for an hour to talk to 10 fisbo leads mm -hmm. and they're not answering their phone when people are calling <laughs> them is is enough evidence that they need a professional to help in the sale of their home yeah i got two great for sale by owner leads today but you know one of my favorite things i know we're switching gears a little bit but one of my favorite things to say for for sale by owner is um you know when they say oh my gosh you know i'm getting all of these agent calls i go oh man that must be terribly frustrating you know how are you handling that <laughs> that's so good just shut up and listen that's so good <laughs> great so i know i haven't tried that paula yeah. I what shutting up and listening or just no. <laughs> that's good too no it's just actually asking that question that's such a good question yeah because i mean it just diffuses the whole like i'm mad at you for being the 50th person to call me today so yeah very yeah. true all right question for you uh curtis Yep. Is there a delay, or or Paula, is there a delay in connecting on the Red X side when someone answers on the other line? No. I, I'll, yeah, I let Paula I answer that because I think you you've had experience with other dialers, right? Yeah. So um, there's not a delay um, in this one, and I've Hi, um, I've used several dialers um, and um, in the past. Am I slighted past? No, before the, before Red X had a dialer. Um, and that was one of my favorite things about um, the Red X dialer is that there's not that space um, in time, you know, there's not that, that pause. All right. So then let's, you can stop the dialing. Let's go into the scripting. And I wanted to show the back end. Curtis, I saw Curtis refreshed the Red X side here. Yeah, yeah. So that I want to show that section too. Give me a second. And then I want to go into the scripting a little bit so that we can see that as well. Let me close this out so people can see on the back end what this looks like, what to expect. Curtis, yep. you can, can you see my screen? Yeah. All right, perfect. So this is obviously the area that I've got. Uh, and these are this is everybody that popped up on my geo lead section. You can also see the expireds and fisbos. Uh, Paula, you were calling the geo leads, right? Correct. All right, perfect. So when you click on geo leads, it loads them up for you pretty quickly, and then you can just click on the dialer, and it would just here. I, I want to take you through the whole process, but you can see what starts happening here. It's aligning them all up, and it's telling you, hey, there's 43. And call phone numbers dispositioned as, and these are the ones that are telling you, well, these are the, these are the ones I'm going to call. And check this out, one of my favorites. Exclude phone numbers on. There you go. Because I know we get a lot of people that are concerned about that. So it's important to load that dialer up like you want it and have that choice. And then after that, you would go ahead and load the dialer and get that going. But that's the back end. I also want to touch on the script. Just Go ahead. If you if you just hit the geo leads button there at the top, don't show them the map of how they over to your upper right, right here. right there, and and that just pulls up the map where where you can actually pull in. Right, let me yeah. Here, let me just select a few of these, not too many. You don't have to do. Okay. Oh, you do, unselect them all and just just and then just click it. Got it. There you go. There you go. And then you can right. just put in an address. 
All right, let's put in an address. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, the one I used last time, perfect. Right in the middle. So the reason why there's those green dots already is it's showing you that these are ones that you've already done searches on in the last six months. Nice. And that, and that way, that way, if you're overlapping neighborhoods, you could go, I, I, I'm going to go back into my system and call the same leads, or I want to look them up again in case things have changed. That's so cool. Yeah. I could see that yeah. it says searches within yeah. today, yeah. zero to six months. Yeah. So if you just hit the preview button, that'll show you what it's going to look up. Those are the nearest 50 and in, in, to that address. And then you just say get leads and it'll pull those leads in. You know, Curtis, what I love is, is that um, right here where it says search neighborhood under the search neighborhood, it, there's a pull down tab. And this takes like this takes like literally like 15 seconds to do right to pull these leads. But let's just say you have a neighborhood where you like I, I have right now a guard gated neighborhood and I want, and the neighborhood next to them are not as, is not as, um, as a different price point. So you can actually draw a circle or you can actually draw like an actual, like if you could even get that little house way over there in the corner and then bring it back and make sure you get like just in the neighborhood. So you can be as specific as you possibly, as, as you want to be. Well, yeah, I, I love that. And then here are the scripts. So, that Paula, Paula could have just been reading off of this, right? Yeah, this is just in with uh, whatever real estate just listed a home over on 123 Main Street. That's got two bedrooms, one bath or whatever you want. Yep, and I was just, using the just sold one. Yep, absolutely. So we know that when one person sells a home, usually two more sell right away. And I was wondering, when do you plan on moving? And then I'll ask, you know, uh, so let's go through it together. So when do you plan on moving? The next one is, how long have you lived at this address? And this gives us an opportunity to build a little rapport. And they'll say, oh, we've lived here for 10 years or we've lived here forever. And I'll say, oh, that's wonderful. You must know everybody in the neighborhood. Who do you know that might be thinking about selling their house right now? Like, I always am looking for an opportunity to ask for business. So, so that one, if they give that, they can tell that. Um, and then where did you move from? Um, so I'll say, hey, you know, where did you move from? Did you stay here in Las, did you move here from Las Vegas or did you move here from somewhere else? Um, in my experience in prospecting and everybody's different, I believe that giving a, a two part answer is helpful, right? So mm -hmm. I'll say, um, you know, when you, when, you know, if you were to move like this one where it says, if you were to move, where would you go next? I'll say, if you were to move, would you go back to LA or would you stay here in Las Vegas? Would you buy a bigger home or would you buy a smaller home? Would you, you know, and then give them, you know, a couple of options. And I find that that's really helpful for them to keep the conversation moving. Oh, I love that. I love giving them a choice. That's so good. Yeah. And then if they're not yeah. interested, they'll be like, no, 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 we're, we're not, we're just going to move somewhere else. Yeah, that's great. So where, Tristan, where are you moving to? I love it. Montana. I'm going to, Mon moving to Montana. That is so exciting. So I'm just curious, what's taking you to Montana? Uh, rivers and open spaces. So you just want to have a different lifestyle, huh? Yeah, there you go. That's great. When you get to Montana, are you going to be buying a home? Uh, probably. Yeah. I'm just going to take a look to see where, where I'm going to fit in. Yeah, no, I don't blame you. And so when we move this equity position from your home to the home in Montana, are you going to need an agent to help you with that? Definitely. I don't know any, I'm new to the area there. Yeah. So here's the good news. I know the very best 3000 agents from all over the country. And I'd be <laughs> happy that. to give you a referral for someone that's going to take great care of you and give you the service you deserve there in Montana. What part of Montana are we moving to? Uh, I was thinking either Helena or Whitefish. Okay, so I'm going to find the best agent in Whitefish and send you an email. What's the best email address for me to send that information to? Kristen at Lab Code Agents. Awesome. I'll make sure it happens. I love that. That was so good. <laughs> There's always an opportunity in every contact, you guys. That's what you got to remember. You just got to look for it and listen for it. I love that. Good job. Good job, Paula. Hey, hey FYI, I grew up like 25 minutes from Whitefish, Montana. So, yeah. <laughs> Good call. It's a, nice it's a great place to move. Good call, Tristan. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I might move there. Who knows? <laughs> There's too much snow. Uh, too much snow? Wait, 
Curtis, does it snow there? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, not yeah. too bad, not too bad. Yeah, yeah. You, but, you, move, you move there for the three beautiful months of the year. <laughs> so maybe I just stay there for three months. You just get a summer home there. Yeah. There you go. That's a much better idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, here, to wrap it up, I wanted to share, I, I created these, these scripts or dialogues, whatever you want to call them. And I have one for circle prospecting, which is just what Apollo was doing there for, for the geo ones as well. You can take a look at them. I've sent them over to, to Curtis so he can share them with you. And if you scroll all the way up to the top, I think this is like 47 pages or so. Yeah. Uh, I've got a little table of context for you of what it is. Expired, um, just expired, old expired, online leads, FISBOs, past clients, and then a whole bunch of text compilations as well. Because I, I used to do this all the time where I was calling for sale by owners and expireds before the world collapsed in 08. And then I shifted everything to online so that I became well versed on both, right? And then I continued both. So, uh, I'm going to hand that over to Curtis so Curtis can yep. send it over to everybody. Curtis, everybody that registered and was here watching live, yep. we'll send you that list and then you can send it. We'll whatever send it to everybody. Want. Yep. With a few of the links that we mentioned throughout the, throughout the thing. Can I just throw one shameless plug in here um, uh, for everybody listening? Uh, Paula talked a lot about practice and, and, we, for all of our customers at Redix, we do have a practice line and we showed that on part one of this and, and you can go back and watch Tristan called in there. Um, we'll probably do that again, but we have people you call in, you practice and you role play and then you click a button and it'll send you the recording of that role play. That way you can give it to a coach, trainer, brokerage, accountability partner. But um, we really believe in practice um, builds confidence and confidence creates better connections, which turn into commissions. Dude, yeah, so. absolutely. And you know yeah. what my favorite thing is? Look, I love long romantic walks to the bank. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I've never seen that. that is so <laughs> I'm going to put that into lab code agents. That is hilarious. <laughs> that is so good. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Paula. I love that. And the, the magical thing that happened the last time, Curtis, was that dial in, I had no, first of all, I didn't even know how it would work. Right. But that dial in, Paula, was so, so easy and so fun. Yeah. I was like, this is so, this is, so, it's like beyond cool because I'm a prospector too. And I was like, if I had this at the very beginning when I started in 04, I, will, I was just like, Tristan, I started about the same time you did. I got my license in 2001. Um, but I used to have two of these headsets. So one like this and one like the other. And I would have like one on one side and one on the other. I had two phones. And I would literally dial this number. And then I would dial this number. And then whoever answered the phone, I would hang up on the other one. <laughs> it was like, that's how I did it. <laughs> so when the dialer came along, I was like... Oh my gosh, I just, I, I cannot, I cannot, I mean, here's the thing, and I mean, I see agents spending money on mailers, I see agents spending money on, you know, advertising, buying leads, all this other garbage, and I think to myself, the price of the dialer is so cheap compared to all of that stuff that doesn't bring you any business. I mean, how many appointments can you make in a month if you have the dialer rather than just mailing out like postcards? Yeah, that's very true. Very true. That's a really good point. And if you guys missed part one, you know, Curtis, um, Tessa, can you include that link to to part one so that Curtis can send that out to everybody that registered? Well, that and even that that clip that you posted in Lab Coats recently of just the role play call, I think is is pretty valuable for people to see the role play system and and hear your script is is pretty good too. So yeah, I love that. And then I'd love to do uh, part two to Paula's whole process here, because I think maybe we can even go into for sale by owners or anything else that you're an expert with Paula when it comes My to SOI is so strong, primarily because I'm very adamant about making it a business call, um, not a social call. And I ask for business. I give gratitude. I give value. I mean, I have a specific script that I use that does all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it, it 
you know, it trains my sphere of influence to call me when they have business for me. It gives them a net to go out and catch fish for me. I love that. I love that. Well, Paula, thank you for being on. Thank you for being professional, positive, and I forgot the other ones. What powerful. Were they? Oh, powerful. <laughs> I'm lost. I'm lost. <laughs> but I love you, Tiara. If you have any referrals for Paula, she's in the Las Vegas area and she'd love to take your referrals. Paula, how do we get a hold of you if we're gonna send you referrals? So I'm, I take care of the entire Las Vegas Valley. So Las Vegas, Summerlin, Henderson, um, and North Las Vegas. You can call me directly at 702-326-4901 or you can send me an email. Um, those would be the best two um, ways to get a hold of me. My email is my name, Paula B at C vegas.com and um yeah you send me a referral i'll make sure you look like a rock star and get paid that's my promise i love it and i love that thing you brought up which is what was it all the way to the bank i love long romantic walks to the bank yeah <laughs> thanks, paula and curtis thanks for putting this together man i appreciate it and please everybody the link to red x is there on the chat box as well and Curtis will send that over to you as well in an email. Okay. And, I'll and I always have fun with prospecting, guys. Thanks, Paula. Thanks, Thanks Curtis. so much.